Walk up in this bitch like, yeah, I'm really him. Talking my shit like, bitch, I'm really him, oh God. Walk in this bitch like, yeah, I'm really him. Talking my shit like, bitch, I'm really him, oh God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Rush. It is your boy, Max Crosby. I got my brothers with me. Broken Rollback, Darian Terrell. There it is. How we doing, boys? How we feeling? I'm amazing. Feel elite. I love that. So, yeah. I'm, like a, How about I'm you? like a nice happy dad sip to, to get the show going, so I feel, I feel great. It's only right. I told How Dean his right? face still slimming down. Dean's getting after you. He looks good. Gotta, if you're gonna be on camera, might as well make the most of it. Hell yeah! 100%. We were on, thank God we're not in person. I'd kiss you. Man, you look that you good, would. brother. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'll take welcome. that as a compliment. You meant it as. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know, it was all hard work. Right Truthfully, <laughs> thank 100%. you. No, I love that, that though. I'm feeling, I'm feeling great though. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, obviously, tough game yesterday, but seeing the guys fly around, the energy, everything was on point. You know what I mean? Right now. Not finding ways to get over the hump, but I feel like overall um, we're going in the right direction. You know what I mean? And we're improving as a defense for sure. So um, that was great to see. We just stuffed the run, which is great. Uh, we've been doing better and better against the run. And I feel like um, against the pass, when we had opportunities, we, you know, caused a lot of pressure and, and did some good things. So, yeah, there's a lot of things to grow from. Um, week by week, we're getting better. Um, like you said, you have opportunities, you know what I mean? You could look at it as, oh, f we're two and nine, whatever. Or you could look at it as an opportunity every single day. You know what I mean? You get to go in that building and get to work, and that's my mindset, you know what I mean? So um, felt great, felt fast, felt healthy, felt like myself, and felt violent and disruptive and uh, did some good things. So got to keep building off it and continuing to grow and, you know, like you said, you know, the goals, everything, nothing, none of that's changed. Sacks, for some reason, you know what I mean? I've been so f close for so many, you know, so many times recently, but it's part of the game. Um, but we're getting a lot of TFLs, that's for sure. Going to keep getting, <laughs> keep getting after, you know, disrupting and f dominating the game. And like, I talked to Rob Marinelli today and, um, and he said it to me since day one. He's like, it's your tape. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, that matters most. Um, and I feel like I put my best, my best shit out there. You know what I mean. So um, I'm gonna, get to, you know, continue dialing in on the details, playing free, playing my game, and not worried about all the other shit. You know what I mean. I already carry carry a lot of weight, and I can't carry, you know what I mean, extra <laughs> baggage that I have no control over. So for me, it's just about dominating the details. And yeah, we're we're we're, we're excited. You know, we quick week, play Friday. Right back to it, going against the Chiefs on the road, Black Friday. Sign me up. So Time I to can't play spoiler wait. again, baby. Yeah, can't wait. You know what I mean? It's gonna be gonna be another war, and I can't wait. So it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. Hell yeah! You, you just talked about you're getting a lot of TFLs, Brogan. What I think he? our boy made a little bit of a a little bit of a wave. A milestone was passed. Let's give him a round of applause real quick. We were you premature last week, but we were some would just call foreshadowing, D. That's yeah. a, that's 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 facts. A no hundred career TFLs, most in the NFL since being drafted in twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is what does that mean to you uh, when you hear a stat like that? It's crazy. It's crazy. I like we talked about last week. We're like, oh, I I think I got it, but then they they called it like a, a no gain. And this week I had to triple down, so I'm at I'm at 102 now. So I'm I'm fired up about that. Um, I think second in the league right now in TFLs. You know, that's something that's for me. Like we talked about, is that disruption. No matter what down it is, if it's run, pass, whatever it is, like being the most disruptive player in the league, and that's that's what I I do. And um, uh. Yeah, it's a it's a big deal. You know what I mean? Seeing like the names that I'm up there with with mm -hmm. TJ or who who are the guys that were I was gonna ask you, bro, how dope is it to be in company with like Aaron Donald, JJ Watt, Von Miller, TJ yeah. Watt, obviously. Those those, yeah. those are the guys. Yeah, yeah, it's literally I think I think somebody told me it was like third third fastest all time to a hundred TFLs. And that's I mean, Aaron Donald, I think it was Aaron Donald and JJ Watt, which are like mm -hmm. two guys that I inspire 
and I've always wanted to be like, you know what I mean? In that conversation. And I've said it years ago, but like being that Aaron Donald, the DNs being that, that JJ Watt who's destroying and wrecking shit on a daily basis. And that's, that's really what it's all about. So like, it's a good start. You know what I mean? Like being in that category, but there's, there's a ton of work to do. And, um, you know what I mean? I, I take a lot of pride in that, you know, playing the run at the highest level and being this, you know, like I said, the most disruptive player in the league. And um, I feel like I'm doing that and I'm showing that. So uh, it's, yeah, it's a big deal. You know what I mean? We got, got a lot more work to do, six more opportunities. There's a ton of shit that can be done. And then, and I plan on doing that. So I just got to go do it. No talking, just got to go put it on display. So um, I'm fired up, bro, for sure. But seeing oh, that, yeah. like seeing, you know, the most TFLs in Raiders history, like that's, that's, you know, big time shit. You know what I mean? We're, we're up to third all time on the sack list, I think, for the Raiders now. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of shit, you know, being done and accomplished. And it's just part of that journey. And, um, you know what I mean? It's, it's hard to appreciate, especially during a tough season like this. Um, but you gotta, you gotta be present and you gotta appreciate shit like that because it's special. You know what I mean? The things I'm doing is everything I ever dreamed of and everything, and all the work is, you know, paying off. So, you know, regardless of, what's going on um all the work regardless you know what i mean the hardest workers the ones that dedicate and sacrifice the most are gonna you know always win in the end and that's you know what i pride myself on so that shit was that shit was dope to see for sure yeah bro and honestly so I, what everyone needs to know it was your 93rd nfl game making you the third fastest to reach the milestone tying Von Miller, your boy, and uh, only behind J.J. Watt at 64 games and then Aaron Donald at 81. So elite company. I guess my only follow-up to the, that is, are you surprised how good you are? <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> no, I've shit. For me, it's I, – I don't even, like, take the time to look at, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's so hard. Like, you got to appreciate it. Like, you know what I mean? But it's really hard because – I'm so in the moment. I'm always worried about the next thing. You know what I mean? I'm always focused on what's next, what's more. Like, after I got that first TFL in the back of my head, I'm like, that was my 100. You know yeah. what I mean? In the back of my head, I'm like, yeah. But then, <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, okay, let's go get more. Let's go get to the quarterback. You know what I mean? Like, that's what it's all about. And like you said, like, it comes in bunches. You know what I mean? Like, I could play really well, and it doesn't show up on the stat sheet, but I'm doing the right things. You know what I mean? But um, that just – that's why, like, the, the bulk of the season, when you have 17 games, like – it all at the end, it's mm -hmm. undeniable, you know, what you do. And like, I'm continuing to, you know, ascend as, as a player, you know, regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the situation, I know I don't have the easiest circumstances, but I don't feel bad for myself. I don't want anybody to feel bad for me. I'm beyond yeah. blessed and I'm having fun and the best time of my life out there on the field. And like, that's really what I went back to. Like this whole week after Miami, I felt like, you know, making a couple of mistakes and shit like that. I was like, this is not myself. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm too, I, I was too like on edge and like mad at the world. Do you feel like world. you were pressed like, in the last few weeks and you just kind of shifted the mindset you think this week? Like, what do you think it was? Because you were, like you said, you're flying around. I mean, taking guys down on screen, play, screen plays to the receiver, down the sidelines, turn around, TFL after TFL, rushing your balls off literally every play shout out to sex underwear but like yeah. you were doing everything you possibly f could but so yeah. was there a shift in your mindset and like you said you mentioned the word free like i'm going out there playing free being myself did you just have to kind of get yeah. back to to that essentially 100 percent, 100 percent. you know what i mean it's like it's so hard and, I, and it's not like you know what i mean i've been with the raiders for six years now you know what i mean and i've, I've had some hard times and i've had some rough ass seasons when it comes to just overall team you know what I mean? Years mm -hmm. like losing, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I'm not a loser. Like I'm a winner. I, everything I do, I, I want to win. And like that shit was, you know, a little in the back of my head, I, I was letting it bother me a little bit too much. You know what I mean? And like, I felt like after Miami, like just watching the film, like really just feel like I was just so wet, so much pent up shit that I was just like lashing out. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. just, you know, even jumping off sides, like I don't ever jump off sides. And like, no, that shit really bothered me. Like little shit like that. It's like, this is not me. You know what I mean? And I know what the fuck I am and I know what I bring to the table. And like after that Miami game, I'm like, I went on Monday and I just reset my mind. Like, I'm like, I'm going to have a great day today. Period. Yeah. And it's hard. And it, it, it sounds like, oh yeah, it's just, you just do that. It's easy. You know, you're doing well, but it's like, no, like I, I really carry a lot of weight and like a lot of people look for me to, for answers. You know what I mean? And like, 
I set the I set the standard and the example, and I got to be the one setting that every day. And mm-hmm. I do, you know what I mean. But it's like my standard is at a, at a different level. I hold myself to the highest, and like I, uh, yeah, I really just reset, and it, it really comes down to my circle. Like you guys, obviously, Tim, CJ, the ones that matter the most, Chris, Robbie, my D line coach, like everybody that are, are with me on a daily basis. Like really, just like okay, let's get back to the basics. You know what I mean? Let's regardless of what's going on like go out there and be you you know what i mean regardless i don't care about anything else i'm gonna go out there and put my heart on the line you never know when this game is gonna end you know what i mean and like playing free and playing fast and just not caring i'm already 260 i don't need to carry 320 around you know what i mean i don't need that extra baggage you know what i mean with the shit that i have no control over so um that's really what it was and i had an incredible week of practice and i went out there and played my ass off and I'm going to do that. And I made a promise to myself, everybody in my circle, everyone in my corner, like that's what I'm doing. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm going to be the best example every day. And that's, that's what I plan on doing. So I got to just do it. There's no, like I said, there's no talking to just go out there and go put on display every single, every single Sunday. Facts. There's no pressure now. That's the best part for you. Oh yeah. No, I love, honestly, it doesn't matter for me. It's when I'm, when I'm my best, it's when I'm, there's no thinking, you know what I mean? I, I, the preparation, all that, the work, all that's always going to be, be put in. But the mental side is like, there's, there's always hard times. You know what I mean? Like that's, mm-hmm. that's what defines you. And like, we talked about it on here. Like it's, there's, there's always those times The Kobe, Kobe had his moments, those tough ass years in, in LA and he was going through it and losing his mind and getting, getting mad and frustrated. And MJ mm-hmm. had those early years in Chicago where he get swept in the first round. Like, losing his shit but like you have to re, re you just have to take a step back look in the mirror and say it like i know who the fuck i am and what i bring to the table and i i gotta be that example no matter what the circumstance is and that's that's what i'm doing so yeah bro i i feel incredible i'm fired up quick week turn around and go get after it so i'm i'm excited hell yeah great Good. week d holiday week hell yeah Arguably one of the one of the best holidays out there, Max. Are, I know the people are probably wondering because we know how you are <laughs> you're with your regimen and you don't ever slip up. But do you act like a normal human being on Thanksgiving, or is it? <laughs> no, I didn't think so. No, no, a I don't. Unfortunately, <laughs> but I, I do. I will say this, Ricky. You know, shout out to Ricky, oh, yeah. best nutritionist in the land. He, uh, you know, he does all my macros and, do, and does all my shit. So on Thanksgiving, he will have the proper macros and everything but it will be a thanksgiving meal so okay um yeah. it's not going to be some heavy ass just sit at the table and fuck up everything in my way like i used to but <laughs> um he will you know make it right for my my uh my diet so hell we'll yeah be, we'll be all set so shout probably, out to ricky probably no turkey we don't need you to be tired you know all that shit but I, at least you get a you get a dabble you get a dip your toe in so, uh, that's all we yeah. can i'm gonna go on a limb here and say Turkey's overrated. I'm not a big turkey guy on Thanksgiving. I weirdly agree. I 100% agree. I'm a honey baked ham guy. Less. Shout out honey baked ham. Love Shout that place. Out to you. Love you. Love you. Um, hey, if you do, I love you. Thank you. Okay. If you do, if you do do turkey, the only way that I found that I thoroughly enjoy it is smoking it. If you do a smoked turkey on the Traeger, spatchcock it. I mean, it's it's what's there. going on. You got spatchcock it. I bet Spatch- I could do that better than anybody in the business and i don't even smoke meat whoa yeah, you do. hey yeah, speaking yeah, of which hey speaking of which what is the boy's favorite what is the boy's favorite thanksgiving meal of all time thanksgiving meal or like favorite thing at the thanksgiving side, thing at- side bro come on now stuffing what? if it's done right stuffing is the key Stuffing's fire, and then you can mix in like a, a corn casserole with yes. that. Yes. Oh man! Or yeah, like some, or some cream cheese. corn. Some Ooh. cream corn done the right way. My dad's mac and cheese. Shout out Verdi. Shout Goes out Verdi. Bananas. Yeah, mac and cheese, the hundred percent too. That's. Yeah. I feel bad shouting out Verdi because I never know what to call your dad. Yeah, see, he's gonna hate that I'm calling him Verdi because he hates that. One hundred percent, he is. Birdie. Big V. Bertrand. You know he's watching. Shout out yep. TV. Shout out loyal, loyal Rushman, loyal. Um, that's shout tough. out to Papa V. Yeah, cheesy I mean, potatoes. Can, can be literally anything but Verdi. Cheesy potatoes. 
Yes. Green bean casserole with the this onion straws on top. They got to have the crispies. Yeah, the onion. They got to be the crispies. They got to be the crispies. You can't yeah. have that leftover. You yeah. can't have that leftover. It no, almost feels too healthy for me, though. Yeah, I want to the crispies like, make yeah. it right. The crispies yeah. make it right. So all yeah. in all, it's like I guess <laughs> yeah, everything yeah. that they bring out at Thanksgiving, we would fuck up. Yeah, uh, the crispies make it right. <laughs> yeah. Better yet, this is the best leading question I have, and I want to start with you, D. I want to know what you're thankful for this year around. You tell the boys and the girls at home, the cartel, what are you thankful for? Talk to us. I think this is a big year family. Family, Katie and I got married. I'm thankful for the, the we were able to have our wedding with the people we love. There was only about 35, 40 people. But I think it's just really the older you get, the tighter the circles get. But I'm thankful for the group that I have surrounding me. And so, yeah, I think that's that's my off the cuff. Hey, hey love you, boys. Great, love oh, you. Man. Thank God, you. I love you that. put me on the spot. I know. Oh. I'm, I'm built for it. Max, what are you thankful for, my boy? Shit, I'm thankful for health, wealth, mm. happiness, peace of mind. My beautiful wife, smoking oh, hot wife, Rachel. Shout out, Rich. Um, Shout my out, rock. Rachel. Um, my daughter, first and foremost, she is the greatest. My daughter Ella, she is a Sorry, I will excuse my language. I'll take the f out. You can believe that. She is the she I don't I don't even know how to describe it. I you talk about like purpose and why and the reasoning of everything, like she makes it all make even more sense. You know what I mean? Like you talk about motivation and that only lasts for so long. Like seeing my daughter after the games and her running in circles and laughing and jumping in my arms, like there's literally nothing better in that relationship I cherish more than anything. So Definitely grateful for them, my, my my two girls first and foremost, my dogs, Dirk, Leo, Brooklyn. Um, they're they're like my other children, and obviously, you guys, my tight knit circle, Tim, Chris, CJ, Rick Slate, the whole crew, um, oh, Ange, yeah. Ricky, everybody that helps me on a daily basis, and I'm grateful for adversity too because I feel like this whole year has been like it's been the story, you know what I mean, and. I know it's been like I'm ducking bullets, catching bullets, mm -hmm. but I'm standing right back in the fire like, let's go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I, I truly appreciate it because I know it's all for a bigger purpose. And uh, this whole year has been it's been that from the start. So I, yeah. I know it's all going to pay off in the end. So I definitely am grateful for that. So hell yeah. yeah well. that's Look at the boys. That's a tough one to follow yeah. up. You guys really yeah, got after get, it there. You shouldn't have asked such a good question. So now That's you're right. Question. I know it is Thanksgiving. So I do love this time of year leads into my favorite holiday years too, Max. I know that, which is Christmas, but uh, mm -hmm. man, I could go. I don't want to piggyback. Obviously thankful for the circle. Obviously my fiance, the family, everybody, my, God, my nieces and nephews, all of them. But honestly, the more I think about it, I'm thankful for this group right here. This pod, most importantly, did not believe I don't feel like early on. We had a tripod and a phone. Episode <laughs> one, a year, a little over a year from now. And to tell me, people, like I said, probably didn't think we could do it. Maybe thought our boy Max here should roll a different crew. And we stuck together. And we, we went through a lot of tough shit. We lot, went through a lot of growing pain. So I'm thankful for growth. I am. I really am. And going into hard times and... uh changing yourself for the better that is and look where we are now the boys are on full send and uh doing a lot of big shit and even bigger shit gonna cook up so thankful for this um just talking shop talking shit with the boys every single week it's always the highlight hopefully it is for everybody back home too that's tuning in so thankful for my boys 100 percent all day every day and uh mm -hmm. it's just the beginning you know the boys are cooking with grief chicken grief grief i'll sip to that <laughs> And we, of course, we're all we're all extremely thankful for the Condor Cartel, the people that tune into us every single week, no matter what what, what what's going on in their lives. They're giving us an hour of their time, so mm -hmm. we love them. Thank you for Amen. thank you for the following. But you know what I love, and you know what I'm thankful for: college football. Yeah. And we 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 had some games that uh, we had some games starting off with Max's Ohio State Buckeyes. Uh, mm. Put some 38 on to 15. I believe I bought them up to 20 and a half. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. A little something there. I mean, it was, <laughs> it was going to be a waxing, 
That, yeah. that, that one. But again, I think I texted you guys the same thing. They are going to have a problem in this college football playoff and this whole run if they can't figure out how to start a game fast. Yeah. What is it? Like, what do you, I don't think I've seen them come out guns blazing this season. Maybe the Oregon game? Yeah, that's about it. Yeah. That's about it. They do start so they start a little slow. They for some reason I don't get it, but I do appreciate the fact that they get better and better as the game goes. Yeah, you know what I mean? Is there's a lot of teams that start fast but don't know how to finish. Mm-hmm. But I feel like they know how to finish. Yeah. Besides the the little hiccup with Will Howard sliding, you know what I mean, or holding on to the ball too late versus Oregon and not getting down um in time. But Besides that, they've been they've looked really good, and they yeah. treated Indiana very accordingly, which is a ten and zero team who's been kicking the shit out of everybody basically. So, I, I like what the Bucks are doing. I yeah. like what the Bucks does are Will doing. Will Howard have a little bit of shit to him? He does. I'm he him. does he's does over problem. there smoking the Indiana pack. He's over there talking about Google this. <laughs> he was he was inspired. No, I like that shit. I like I the quarterbacks too. got some shit to him. Mm-hmm. He did. Maybe. I like when they talk shit. They're, I think they're the, I think they're the best team in the country right now. I, I really agree. do. Unfor- it hate. I it pains me to say that. I get but that. But you got to be real, and we can't be biased here, D. And I think no, they're the best team. No. We can't be biased. I think what I like the most about college football right now is that there isn't one clear cut. Anybody can make a case for a few teams. Yes. There isn't yeah. just one clear cut juggernaut, and that's what's no. going to make this extremely fun here in the playoffs. Hundred percent. Like oh, Georgia is not a giveaway. Like Georgia's not a. They're good, very good, but they're not a super powerhouse like they've been. Bama blown out. What the? F- Bama got smacked. They got smacked. Third, they're they're not gonna make it. No, Oklahoma no, no, they're one not. One in five in the SEC, bro. Coming into that game, one in they five. They got smacked any given Saturday. It's crazy. It's not good. It's just like, I don't know. The, the Coogies were doing really well. Now they lost two in a row. Yeah, they lost their 28 to 23 to Arizona State. Arizona State, two back to back big wins. They're I training know. in the wrong way. I know. BYU. And, then, they're, they're, yeah. and, and then you know who's training know, in the right way? Kansas. Kansas. <sighs> they started one and five. They started no, one and five. Can't. They're five and six now, and they just beat Colorado beat them and that hurts because they had the cleanest uniforms out of the, the like the whole college football season crispy yeah. those were them so in oregon clean. oregon's shit against ohio state oh, was yeah. really filthy yeah too. they're just so always filthy you can't even compete with them no go there for seven years now and they still won't wear the same combo once yeah that's incredible honestly i'm gonna i'm not past this part yet but we ship back to bama really quickly i don't yeah. think Jalen milrow is that good he can run and he can you're do some stuff. You're not that guy, pal. You're not, that, you're not guy. that guy. Just you're not that pal. guy. Unfortunately, not. I think he. Oh, I don't know what it is, D. It is tough, and I'm not going to go too far into that. But th- he's got to play better ball if they want to have any he chance. Does. But I don't know if they have a chance now at this point. He's struggling I, now. I hate he to is. see it because he is. He had such such great potential, and I still think he does. I don't yeah. know. It's. I'd almost love to see him come back, but who knows? I don't think he can. Can he? Maybe I think he's a junior, but I could be wrong on that. If he can come back, that'd be dangerous. Can we can we look that up real quick? Why is Penn State number four in the country? I mean, that's Penn State only won by one point against Minnesota. That's what I'm saying. They're they're the worst top four team in the country by far. They're going to lose in the first round of the playoff. I guarantee it. All my buddies back home, they think the same thing. They think Penn State is the most overrated team in the the world. They They just get handed the top. Like, who have they beat? They haven't beat anybody, I feel like. Confirmed he is a junior. Okay. He can come back. Hey, that got me a little fired up for Kalen. Give him a second year in an offense. He's got some dogs at receiver. We got to get the, the whole team settled in. Don't count Bam out next year. But no, let me ask you out. this. Absolutely not. If, if uh, you're Kalen, are you ready to move on, though? Maybe get the next guy in here that you. No. No. Oh, this guy's got a learning curve. No. You got this dude's got all the, the tangible things that you want. 100%. I completely um, agree. I'm going to build up him. I'm going to build him up in the offseason and spend every waking minute by his side. He yeah. kind of reminds me of Anthony Richardson a little bit. Like, has so much potential, 
you know, bigger guy, especially at that position, and then can run obviously unbelievably well. But just the game tape, like there's huge flashes, and then there's just moments where it's like, what? Yeah, very iffy. I mean, three points is well. That's I haven't seen that with, um, with Bama in, ever. Yeah, no. especially against ever. Oklahoma, former Big yeah, Twelve. Like, yeah, that but was this upcoming week. We got some. I want. I got. Four games I want to hear you guys' thoughts on. Oh, Starting off, number one. I'll give you one guess who number one is. Just one guess. Ohio State, Michigan. Ohio State, Michigan. Michigan is going into the shoe mm-hmm. and playing the Buckeyes after the Buckeyes have struggled to get it done. What are our thoughts that uh, for this game? You can go first, Brogan, because I, I have a very strong opinion on what's going to happen. <laughs> okay. So, obviously, we all know. I grew up a Michigan fan. I think Michigan gets busted up by three to four touchdowns. Seriously. They're yeah. not even on the same stratosphere. But Michigan fans shouldn't even be that mad about it because they just pulled off the biggest Houdini act ever in the world by getting Bryce Underwood right down the street here. Belleville, Michigan, number one yeah. player in the country. Flip from LSU, now at Michigan. So $10 million. That's crazy. Money $10 talks. million. Dollars. No, Bro. that's nuts. Did he just start a movement low key before you give your pick? I feel like we're going to see crazy numbers out of quarterbacks in college football now after this is all said and done. Hell yeah. Portnoy said it, but he's like, I'm rich. I'm sick of watching my team suck because of no quarterback. I'm going to buy one. And look what <laughs> he know. He, they sourced $10 million. Portnoy was a part of that? Yeah. Portnoy like started this whole thing. Yeah. Oh, oh my he's God. like, I'm sick of this. I'm rich. I could, I could buy a quarterback. So That's he, awesome. Yeah, so he throws like a few million, and then this uh, some other guy puts in like six, seven million dollars over, over a four year span. Yeah, we need to get, we need to make a f- call over to Ole Ipsalani and say, hey, yeah, let's, let's go on the portal on the road, and let's let's get some boost, boosters together, and let's f- go get our own quarterback. I'm glad right. you mentioned the Eagles. Well, That's why we do have the, uh, the the True MU Collective. We do have that. I'm telling you. <laughs> we can get somebody to flip one of these, you know, Minnesota-type guys yeah. or yes. Indiana-type. F- that. You're yeah. coming to Eastern, I'll pay you out of my pocket and we'll take care of you. Especially at go. the quarterback position, there's no – so many all-time great quarterbacks came from the MAC. Literally, so many great quarterbacks have yeah, came confirmed. through the MAC. Confirmed, and and even better yet, confirmed. it's harder to stay in the NFL. MAC quarterbacks have a great history of having longevity in the NFL. A MAC players time. in general that make it to the league have a Mac. great career. Yes. they really do. Yep, they do. All right, one hundred percent. Brogan, you said a few touchdowns. I'm just going to tell you my opinion. Forty nine seven. I think Ohio State gets to bust in their ass, Jesus. and it's personal. I, I really do think it's personal. No, Ryan Day is going to try to run that. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. I agree. They're going to try I, to stomp their heads in, and I don't blame him at all. Yeah, he needs especially to. because the head coach from Michigan is the one that beat him last year as the interim because Harbaugh was Connor Stallion. Oh, true. Yeah. So he's really going to be on. He's going to be on some other shit. So yeah. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be, it's going to be a back to back blowouts for for the Buckeyes going into the, the uh, postseason. Yeah, I think they're going to get after him. There's no doubt think? in my mind. Next one, you got Alabama hosting Auburn. Bama. That's going to be a good game. No, Auburn just beat Mississippi State. So did Toledo. Over times. So did they Toledo. They just beat them. In regulation. But they were ranked 15th. They were, they were, they were ranked no, they team. they beat A&M. Or a and I'm sorry. A&M. They, beat, they beat A&M. Number 15 A&M, four overtimes. Yes. It's crazy. Yeah, I watched the end. I saw the end of regulation. And I didn't. I didn't get to catch the overtime. But weirdly, they're going to carry some momentum into that Bama game. They're going to be ready to f- go. Weird really? things happen in there. But I've watched Auburn play a few times, and they, I think they blew their load here this this week. And uh, <laughs> Alabama's going to roll, roll tide, roll, roll tide. Yeah, well, it's I'm, a low tide right I'm, now. I'm pulling for Kalen. I need. Trust me, they, they need it. Yeah, at they home, I, 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 got, I got my money on Bama. Um, next one, so Texas A&M bounces back after their loss to Auburn, and they are hosting Hook'em, the Texas mm. Longhorns. 
I think that could be a high scoring football game. But I mean, the Texas rolls. Texas rolls. I don't know. I don't want. I don't want to say rolls. I think that Texas wins the game, but I think there's a lot of points that they get scored there. Gagum, Gagum. The last one, mediocre no. <laughs> on the record wise. South Carolina at Clemson. Ooh. Give me the Gamecocks. I'm Give all me the Gamecocks. I'm all on the Gamecocks. I'm all in, bro. South Carolina's low key fire Dude, this year. They get yeah. after it. They got a great defense. Their quarterback is a f-ing unit. I love it. Just starts running people over. I'm all about the Gamecocks. They're eight yeah. and three right now. Oh, yeah. 18th I'm all in about the country. The yeah, this Lenora Sellers, he's a behemoth. He's 242. Yeah. He's yes. enormous. I like, yeah, I like him. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Only downfall is they are, I believe, at Clemson. So that's not really an uphill battle because South Carolina is very tough at home. But, Yo, yeah. hey. hey, really quick, what do we got to do, Max? Let's get you a little, we need you to make like a little hype up video inside Rhinerson there, the factory on Max Crosby Field that they play for the, the fans every game. Let me let me let me give you a little preview right here. Okay. okay talk this, listen, before you do, this week, Western Michigan Eastern battle for the Mac trophy, also battling for bowl eligibility. Hype the boys up. Talk to them at EMUFB. Ooh. Hey, at EMUFB. I'm gonna just put this out there. We've had some struggles this year. We've given away some games. Some games that were very, very winnable. But that won't define your season if you go and smack the shit out of Western. Mm-hmm. This is our biggest rival. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows that. We hate the Broncos. I don't care that my father's from KZU. F*** them. <laughs> and y'all have to show up and do what the f*** y'all know you can do. You got to play four quarters of complimentary football and dominate from start to finish. You're, everything's on the line right here. And we're talking about everything. Never. You go five and seven after starting the way we did. What were we five and what five and one five and two? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was and a good then, start. Yeah, great start. And if we don't capitalize, it's gonna be it's gonna get uncomfortable. You know what I mean? So, what better way to go to KZU and smack the shit out of the Broncos? Become bowl eligible. Go to a bowl game again, mm-hmm. and ride into the off season. Go get a bowl win again. Mm-hmm. And then the momentum we're trending this way, we learn how to finish. We get enough, you know. We figure out, get some more recruits, start building in the right direction. But it all starts this week. This is a rivalry game. This is the biggest game of the year. Everything. I don't care what it takes. You find a way to win, and that's from coaches, players, fans. Everyone has to be all in, and we will beat the Broncos. So get your minds right, and we're gonna come celebrate with you guys after the season yes. because. It's only right, and we're yeah. we're putting everything on the Eagles this week. So go be right. great. And see you at the bowl one, game. We'll see you at the bowl game. One thing yeah. I'm going to add to that: both teams five and six. We not only have the yes. opportunity to win the Michigan MAC, but to ruin and end their season. Yes, to take their bowl hopes away. That's just oh, the God. cherry on top. The boys know when we come to Ipsy, we bring the happy dads. Come so on. we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate the right way. So just give us a reason. Cool. Give us we'll a reason. Be. We'll do it oh, for him. Yeah, Come on. I'll let you guys double down for me. I'll be drinking my Zen waters, but I'll be there f-ing ready and the hype. Yeah. I'll have some smelling salts ready to f-ing scream on the sideline. Yes. Throw them at the camera again. Yes. yes. <laughs> I lo- by the way, I loved the smelling salt right to the camera yesterday. Yeah. It was all time. I actually, <laughs> LOL, out loud. I did too, out loud. And then when he took he took Bo yeah. Nix's towel, it's like it was like the last second thing, and I saw it at the top of the screen. I was howling I'm like this man's petty. <laughs> yeah, I was just I was just having fun. Just let him see there, right there. Yes, Doing my shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Brogan, Darian, do you have on what I have on that the people here can't see below the waist? I'm staying true to myself. D, are you staying true to yourself? There's only one answer for the comfiest sweatpants in the game. It's Ohio. Everybody just saw Thursday night football. It was snow in here. But there's one thing that I walk around my house in at all times, and that's those true classic sweatpants. They are unbelievable. Those joggers are the softest and most durable sweatpants that I have. Darian, it's like laying in a cloud. I remember you vividly texted me actually this weekend. You said, I'm wearing the best sweatpants I've ever worn in my entire life. So there's a personal endorsement for our boy D right there. He was lounging 
in the True Classic joggers. And not to mention, D, I like to spice up the little True Classic t-shirt with it. It's not one of those weird, awkward white t-shirts that don't fit you right. Uh, we're bigger bodied people. I'm a bigger bodied guy. Sweatpants fit right. Shirt, nice, nice, nice here on the arms. They keep it longer down there past the waistline. They have an unbelievable product. We hit on you wearing them around the house, but the best part is you get to show those bad boys off. Me, I wear mine in the grocery store. I wear mine out to the gym. You know, I'm comfortable. I'm also flexible. I can get down in those squats with my true classics. It's an all-time winner. And the best part is when you want to dress up but also be dressing down, I throw that T-shirt on, baby. I'll put it on with some slacks. I'll throw a little coat over top, business and casual at the same time. You can buy those T-shirts in three, six, or nine packs. You can mix and match your colors and get whichever combination you'd like. And honestly, Darian, it's starting to get colder here for the boys, as we know, you know, in the Midwest. So the best part is they got the fall and winter must-haves for me personally is those long sleeve Henleys, along with the call me throwback, if you will, but the waffle hoodies. I love that. Nothing speaks nostalgic to that. True Classics trusted by over 4 million customers, and they have 200,000 plus reviews. The holidays are here, and True Classics is ultra comfortable. Perfect fitting essentials make the perfect gift for you and your men in your life. So, if you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now to unlock some big savings during their huge holiday sale. Just go to the exclusive link at trueclassics.com slash the rush to save. That's trueclassics.com slash the rush. T-H-E-R-U-S-H. Tell them we sent you. And every year, the holiday cheer, thanks to True Classics. Happy holidays. Yesterday, we had a, a couple couple games going on in the NFL, but it started with uh, the Cleveland Browns hosting the Pittsburgh Steelers on Thursday night football. Yeah. Um, I don't want to say that I tried to tell people that you should probably take this game, that this would be the spoiler alert, but it was. Yeah. Uh, but my question you to you about that, oh, I, we took them. <laughs> took them. <laughs> um, my question to you, do you think it should be illegal for AFC North teams to play inside of a dome after witnessing what that game was on Thursday night football in Cleveland, Ohio? No, that game was legendary. That Elite. was legendary. That the snow, I mean, Jameis's <laughs> touchdown run was the greatest thing I've ever witnessed in my life. Yeah. He was like, no, I'm going to make this a highlight. And he went airborne. I'm like, I love this guy. Yeah, I love Jameis. Um, yeah, I mean, that was, that was all time. That game... You can't play indoors. Can't. It's not. It's just not American. I mean, you just can't. You can't. And this so, is American football. Yeah, okay. this it deserves. The AFC North football needs cold, grimy conditions. It's only right. Yeah. It almost looked like it was black and white on the TV. The the amount of like blizzard that was happening out there. It was. Yeah, it was insane. nuts. That it was, was nuts. Yeah, it was nuts. But God bless Cleveland, Ohio. What 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 a game that was. I have to I have to ask since we're talking about the Brownies, Max. You happened to catch uh, Miles Garrett after the game talking. <laughs> what are your yeah, thoughts on that? I want to hear your real thoughts here. What do you mean? What are your thoughts what on his want? comments proclaiming he's you number already know one? My thoughts. You already know my thoughts. I respect it, though. I mean, if he doesn't feel like he's the best, then what are you doing? You know what I mean? If you're a top guy, if you're at that level, you obviously got there because you deep down believe you're the best at what you do. So, I mean, I respect it. Me and Miles have been... I mean, last three years, it's been me and him, the two starting DNs in the in the Pro Bowl. We've mm -hmm. both been all pros together. Uh, NFL PA, all pros. The, they put two ends as me and Miles Garrett. You know what I mean? So, like, I respect that. He should feel that way. He just won Defensive Player of the Year. That's something I want to get. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's He's, you know, he's been in the league, I think, two more years than me. But, you know what I mean? Like, that shit is real competition. And I see – you know, the way he's playing, he's done it at a high level for a long time, and uh, you got to respect it. You know what I mean? I have a good relationship with Miles. Me and him, we communicate, um, you know, here and there, but he's a hell of a player. So if he didn't feel that way, I feel like that would be something, you know, that would be more alarming. <laughs> yeah, it would be more alarming. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm the best, period. And you know what I mean? I We go stat for stat or whatever, break down everything you want. Um but I feel like any guy at the top, from him to myself to TJ, Nick, Bosa, um, I mean, there's a few guys in that for sure. In that echelon that, I mean, you can make a case for. So I respect it. It's all friendly competition. And that's what it's all about. So I got to, you know what I mean? You got to respect that. So 100%. 100%. I feel it.
Keep the juices flowing, baby. I just wanted to see. I just want to get you riled up. Next game up Not is the Cowboys. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Cowboys Commanders. Did you see how that that, that game ended? The no. Cowboys won 34-26. The Commanders come down. They were down by uh, 27. Was it 27-20? Um, they scored a touchdown at the end of the game. They missed the extra point. So they're down 27-26. to 26. They go to onside kick it, and the, the kicker says he should have kicked it more left. He kicked it right to dude. He catches it, house call. And cribbed it on onside. Oh, cribbed it. Oh, I did not see that. Bro. <laughs> I did then, not see that. Look up look up that kick return. They also had a kick return for a touchdown. I see Turbo. Bro, off that dropped, the dropped return, he hit one of the cleanest spin moves I think I've ever seen. Yeah, no, Turpin's my dog. I put uh, Turpin. He's he's a he's a baller, bro. He is you a see baller. On a basketball court, the dude has a forty something inch vertical. He flies. Really? He's this big. He's going up there windmill dunking the ball. I'm like, this dude is a he's a creative character, bro. <laughs> Literally, he hit like no, a reverse ridiculous. spin move, gone ninety nine yards. He's Damn. crazy. I think he came from yeah. like the USFL sort of deal. Really? Yeah. No, yeah. he's cold as a couple as of years ago. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy over there. And then I can't believe the Texans dropped to the Titans. That's tough. I that, can't say I saw that one coming at all. That one hurt. CJ, uh, CJ's so good. Let's start by that. CJ Stroud is so f- filthy, and I think he's going to be an unbelievable quarterback. But something doesn't look right on the offense side of the ball with them. Yeah, they're they're struggling. Something's but a little it, off. But then it – but then it does because, like, you got, like, mix-ins going off. It's, like, it's very hot and cold for their games. Yeah. So, I, I know exactly what you mean. It's not consistent like they were even last season. I think they were consistent throughout the, the last half of the season and even into the playoffs. But I feel you. It's it's very ebbs and flows with them right now. Yeah. yeah. Their defense, they got a crazy front. Yeah, they, they do. got They got some dudes up front. Their yeah, whole D-line is stacked. Yep. Um, yeah. But yeah, offensively they they've been struggling a little bit. I think they, as a team lie. they had they had eight sacks and they still mm-hmm. still lost. Yeah, that's crazy. They were teed Titans. off. It's crazy. Titans right. are tough. Weirdly, the Titans. I think the Titans' defense is very underrated. Like they obviously they're struggling their offense. Will Levis is trying to find his groove. New, you know, a lot of young players on the offensive side. They're trying to build that up. Their defense is solid. Yeah, their defense is really solid. They got a good front too. This is random as hell, but I would just—I had the Manning cast on tonight. uh, Watch it Monday Night Football. Sometimes I tune in. Sometimes it's kind of hard. But anyways, I was watching. They had Belichick on for the first half. Belichick was awesome. First off, but I wanted to ask you, bro. You've been doing the Let's Go Pod with him quite a bit this year. How's it been? Been able to chop it up with literally the goat and just talking ball and just like. Is he any different from what you anticipated? I know you already know him a little bit playing in the league, but is Belichick on air a little different? Is he a little more relaxed? He seems like he's showing a little more personality these days. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's cool to see, you know, just because obviously he's been so, like, buttoned up and, like, anti-media, you know what I mean, his whole career. Um, but I've gotten to, you know, obviously having the – you know, we had our New England-ish type regime being with Josh mm-hmm. for two years and that type of, you know, mentality and staff and having the Patriots come to us twice, you know, for training camp and, you know, getting to spend some time with Bill. Like, I've literally – I go work out bright and early in the morning and the only other person in there is Bel- Bill Belichick and the strength coach. So it was me and him working out next to each other. <laughs> and um, I got to, you know, chop it up with him a little bit and on the practice field, like, talking shit a little bit and – He's just, uh, he's actually really cool. You know, every conversation I've had with him has been awesome. Um, things I've heard about him are awesome. You know, some people obviously have their opinions. Um, you know, the guys that aren't the hardest workers or don't like the long hours have a problem, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But he was a proven winner for a very long time. So, like, there's nothing you can really say against that. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, his formula work. Um, Brady obviously is a big part of that, but – just knowing Bill um, a little bit and being able to be on the podcast with him, you know, with him and Jim Gray and Peter King, like a ton of legends, you know what I mean? Having that opportunity, obviously the rush is first in my heart and soul and that will never change. Um, but yeah, you know, getting that opportunity, you know, Bill went into, he went into broadcasting. So he kind of had to 
step aside from that. And they came to me with that opportunity. So just being able to spend some time with them and, you know, talk ball with some OGs and some real legends was, uh, it's, it's been a hell of an experience and yeah. Bill for sure. Like Bill's cool as shit. Like he's, he he's all football all the time and you can sit there and talk with him, talk ball with him 24 seven. So um, it's it's been real cool. He had someone printing off like stats and all this shit, like in twelve personnel, twenty one personnel. They're in it fifty percent of the time. All this stuff on the Manning cast. Just probably had an assistant to the side, full blown printing paper off to him. We can see him just reading it off. I'm like, someone get my boy Bill a a tablet. The real question is, is Bill pushing weight in there? Is he doing aerobics? What kind of workout is Bill Belichick doing when you He's see wearing him in the a trash bag? No, Trash yeah, for thing. sure. For yeah. sure. He was getting after it, though. Like, <laughs> Bill was really getting to it. Like, he wasn't in there doing some, like, old man shit. Like, he's 70, what, 75, 74? He was in there getting busy. Like, he was really training. Like, he was getting after it. And I was like, I, I respect that shit. Like, especially, like, me as a player, like, I respect the hell out of a coach that, like, preaches what he lives you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it's just different like when you have a like it's like having a nutritionist who's 400 pounds it just doesn't make sense you know what i mean like work, huh? yeah or like a trainer who doesn't work out it's like doesn't make sense to me so he uh yeah i respect the shit out of it and he was getting after it he was full-blown sweat <laughs> and he was in there for a long ass time doing everything so yeah it was it was cool to see for sure hell yeah and he's funny too like he's low-key like he's got a dry ass sense of humor but <laughs> my first interaction with him like i was kind of nervous like i'm like this is bill belichick like i don't even know how to approach them how can you and like no I, I don't even know what to say and like <laughs> it was one we're like walking off the field and it was like after the first day it was like the second we're about to start the second day and I'm like, Bill, I was like, give me some one-on-ones. I was like, stop f***ing chipping me. Let me get a little action. And he's like, he just turns, slowly looks at me. He just goes, no. <laughs> just keeps walking. <laughs> I'm like, I'm, like, I'm trying to be like funny. You know what I mean? And he's just yeah. like, no. <laughs> You're 98. <laughs> yeah, it was funny as shit. I'm like, okay. Well, right. I respect it's even that. Worse. Even worse, because then you're starting to think, you're like, man, should I even said anything? You know, yeah, it's like, I'm just like, God, he probably thinks some stuff fast. Yeah, but no, he was no. He, he was cool. I, I feel Bill heavy. <laughs> he's funny. he's a legend, and he'll yeah. he'll be back in coaching in no time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has to be. Yeah, he'll be back T next year. There's could no be Darian. That. Could be that yep. team you just said. Very well, could be. He'll be catching some rays down in Florida, cold Jacksonville. I feel like he's going to Dallas. You do? Is he too much? Too much person? Not just, personality. Feel, but can can well, Jerry really give up the keys? I think Jerry's to a point where he has to. He has no other option. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's, Jerry's old and Bill's old. Like, they got to win now. You know what I mean? Like, just being They're real. Like, together. Yeah, like, <laughs> they want to win. You know what I mean? And, like, yeah. there's just got to be a little bit of give on both sides. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like he might go to Dallas. I don't know. I just, I feel like the earth is telling me this. I don't know. Okay. I love that. I love that from you. All right, let's get into our next segment here of our dog of the day. <laughs> 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 my boy dog of the day we'll start it off you know we uh we, we don't give the dog of the day to the rookies you know what i mean we, we really struggle with that unless you're brock bowers um but we had to give it to my boy you know what i mean this dude is uh growing as you know as we speak he's getting better and better every week and he's evolving as a player and it's awesome to see um you know just as a leader and like being you know, my position, like just to say I possibly had a little bit of piece of helping him out and continuously going to be doing that is, you know, means everything to me. So Tyree Wilson, my boy, had four tackles, sack, two TFLs yesterday. Um, the game's slowing down for him and he's he's starting to learn how to become a professional. And um, it's awesome to see. You know what I mean? It was it, it reminds me similar to like last year with Malcolm. You know, it took Malcolm some time and Malcolm once he figured it out he f took off and like Tyree's starting to you know consistently be a be a difference maker and it's awesome to see you know what I mean because he took a lot of shit early on um but he has all the potential and all the talent in the world and he's starting to realize you know what it takes to really be a professional and be a a, a guy in this league and he you know it's obviously early on um he's he's got a lot of work to do still and it's never ending but 
um, seeing what he's doing and, and him having a big game, um, you know, against a against a you know rival opponent was uh, awesome to see. So our dog of the day, big shout out to my boy. I call him Tyree Wilson. Big shout out to you, Tyree. <laughs> Atta boy, Tyree. Yeah, no, sure we're, like we were, I'll give you a little background. A little background. We're in the uh, we're in the defensive <laughs> meeting, and uh, Pat, our, our D coordinator, he's you know going into it doing saying you know he's he gets going fast sometimes. He's just talking about and he's like brain faster than the mouth. Yeah, he was just going, and he was like Tyree. And he, for some reason, he pronounced the most country as version of Tyree. And I'm like, I'm forever going to call you Tyree for the rest yeah. of your life. So Matt's he's just like, sitting there with a shit grin on his face. Like, oh, yes. like perfect. He, we were <laughs> probably laughing. So, yeah, I call him Tyree now. But Tyree is his, it's his alter ego. He's, he's starting to come into his own. Yes. I wonder, Max, uh, you, real quick, you said everyone's been at least Raider Nation – Condor Cartel, everyone has kind of been waiting for Tyree's arrival, so to speak. What do you think when you said he's getting it now? You said the same thing with Malcolm. So for Tyree, like what is have you seen? What do you think is the biggest factor and what's kind of getting the ball rolling for him, so to speak, now? Um, it's just it's the day to day. You know what I mean? It's it's the preparation, the the commitment to um your craft, you know what I mean? From Working with Robbie, doing the extra time with Robbie, staying, you know, working with Dre constantly, working with us, you know what I mean? He every drill, like he, me and him, are I'm grabbing him, we're doing drills and doing, you know, I'm teaching him and learning and, you know, trying to trying to help him. And Robbie's done an incredible job. Andre Carter, everyone has been so hands on with him because we believe in him, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know what I mean? He, it's, but I'm not taking any credit. Like he had to do it himself, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it comes down to the player, and he's fully like you know, humbled himself and realized like, listen, I got to, there's no, you know, you can't blame him. Like you come in your top 10 pick, your expectations, everything is out, out the, you know, out the roof immediately. It's like, you're expected to be this guy right Along now. With everyone else's expectations. Yeah. The fans, the world, the everything. So, and that's a lot, you know what I mean? Especially as a young guy and he was dealing with injury, you know, he missed a lot of time and it's like, it's tough. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, he took a lot of shit early, but he, he took it on the chin and he kept working and he, he's learned he's he's has a solid routine. He's doing things the right way and you just see his game getting better. So, um, yeah, I'm happy for him and he, he's only going to get better. So, yeah, oh, yeah, it's just it's just a culmination of like all those things, you know, putting it together and, you know, becoming the best version of himself. Oh, yeah. Shout out. Shout, shout out to Tyree. Tyree. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. We got a uh, Chiefs. At home. No words. We, I think we all know what it is. No words needed. It's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll be tuned in, locked in. I'm ready to watch a f show. It takes balls to sack a quarterback. It takes Saks underwear to support your balls. I've teamed up with Saks as their newest ambassador to bring you game-changing underwear. Saks underwear is versatile and comfortable. I wear it to train, hang out, and even sleep. They've got a pair for everything, and it allows me to be limitless every day. Use my code, the Rush 24 for 15% off at Saks.com. Saks underwear with the ballpark pouch changes the game. Period. That being said, we're going to get mm -hmm. right into... A Rushman segment. And you guys know, this is my favorite segment. <sighs> to say the least, we got our Rushman of the week. We got three guys, three great rushers, three great players in general. Um, we're going to start off with number three. This might be a first-timer. This might be a first-timer for the show. Might but be. this dude is a baller. He's been being highly paid for a long time. He's very underrated, and he plays the game the right way, run and pass. He's a beast he's a force in the middle he could play in four eye he could play at the three tech he could play at five he's a hell of a player and he's been doing it for a long time and just got paid again so coming in at number three our guy leonard williams six tackles two and a half sacks completely wrecked the arizona cardinals this dude was dominant from start to finish he was everywhere and just disruptive as shit from start to finish so um got a ton of respect for this dude you know me and him we've, we've chopped it up a few times but just knowing him from afar, I think he trains. I believe he trains with Christian um, in that group as well. Um, and I've heard a lot of great things about him. So this dude's a baller. Um, he's done it at a high level, like I said, for a long time. And coming in, big-ass game. Pause. He, he comes in versus the Arizona Cardinals, division rival, a lot on the line, and he 
wrecks the game. And uh, like I said, six tackles, two and a half sacks. That's good for our number three rushman of the week. So big shout out to you, Lenny. Boy, Lenny. <sighs> big Lenny. Um, number two, seven tackles, three sacks. Went ballistic. This dude could have been number one. It was basically a tie for the top spot. Um, but this dude's been – it's another one. Dude's been doing it at a high level for a long time. Just got paid again. Elite rusher. Very underrated in my opinion. Seven tackles, three sacks. Going dummy. He's dummy. back in double digits again. Um, and this dude, Daniil Hunter, he's one of the most unique – talents i've seen play the edge position he reminds me a lot of chandler jones he's very unorthodox very like he has some of the craziest weirdest strangest rushes i've ever seen but he makes it happen and he's super creative with it and um i got a ton of respect for him so coming in at number two rushman of the week daniel hunter big shout to you brother daniel hunter i think you where was he vikings last year max yep. yeah he vikings. was in minnesota for a long time and uh he signed a deal um and went to houston yeah. And they got two. They got two guys now. I mean, him and Will Anderson, both legit guys. So, yeah, yeah they they got it cooking over there. They got about seven D linemen that can go. Um, so they got some dudes. Um, so big both been on this them. list numerous times, by the way. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. And then coming in at number one, the guy we already talked about, massive respect. Um, one of the best rushers in the league, without a doubt. Five tackles, three sacks, forced fumble. First half, he completely wrecked the whole f-ing game. He was destroying. Um, it seems like every time he plays the Steelers, this this happens. Um, yeah. This is like a no, normal thing. Um, but he definitely turn, turns up versus the Steelers. And like I said, this dude is one of the best in the game. Um, got a ton of respect for him. He is great against the run and the pass. He's disruptive as shit. And he is a problem on a down to down basis. So coming in at number one with the three piece chicken nugget with a mm. forced fumble, my guy, Miles Garrett. Big shout out to you, brother. You're our number one rushman of the week. Yep. They're eating Boom. dubs. They're eating dubs, Big D. Jameis dubs. Mm. Big dubs. So let's For close it out. Give him a little happy Thanksgiving at the end, Max. Okay, love you. Ladies and gentlemen, Condor Cartel, everyone watching and tuning in, I just want to say happy Thanksgiving. Arguably the greatest holiday we have, probably second to Christmas, but it's definitely up there. Big shout out to everybody. We're beyond thankful for all the fans, everyone tuning in, the Raider Nation, the Condor Cartel, and most importantly, my people, my brothers, my guys right here, everybody on a daily basis, my daughter, my wife, everyone involved. CJ, big shout out to CJ. You already know. We love you. Shout out to CJ. Um, CJ. Shout out to Timmy Grover. Timmy Grover was here this weekend. We had spent a lot of time together. Absolute legend. Um, And I can go on and on. But the people in my circle, that's what I'm most thankful for. And this is the best time of the year. It's holiday season. Black Friday. Going to KC. No words needed. So, Big shout out to everybody. Keep tuning in. Keep liking. Keep subscribing. Keep commenting. I love you guys. And also, Eastern Michigan Eagles, I gave you my message. You guys need to come through. You need to beat the Broncos and mm-hmm. dominate. Mm-hmm. And to everyone out there watching, like I said, adversity is a blessing. So keep working. Do not stop. Never quit. That's the only way you lose. So that little that meme, that Kobe at the press conference bending over, and that shit says keep going, that's – that's what it is right now. This whole year has been that, and it's a blessing in disguise. So keep your head up, keep working, keep moving, and keep grooving. This is The Rush with my brothers. You already know what time it is. We love you all. We'll see you next week. Let's Bars. Get it. Bars. 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 Peace. Walk up in this bitch like, yeah, I'm really him.